Welcome to a Chat with Heart podcast. I'm your host, Christina Martin. I'm here to help guide heartfelt conversations with new and old friends I've met from just being alive or touring my music around North America and other parts of the world. I chat with people I feel a kinship with and that I genuinely believe we can learn from. Our personal stories have great power to heal, influence, and inspire. All we have to do is show up for the conversation. We just talk about it. We could shut up. Hi, everybody. Love is in the details, but so is the devil. My guest today is one of my best friends. He has an eye for stunning details in his work as a musician and also a visual artist, and with his business, Joy with Honey. He's kind, generous, brilliant. He's an entrepreneur. Oh, he's brave. He's very, very handsome. Did I mention he's uber talented? And his name is Ryan McGrath. Ryan lives in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, but he's lived overseas for many years, and we chat about that. I really love this talk because uh, Ryan shares his experience going through like a really desperate time in his life and how one of the most beautiful experiences of his life resulted from a risk he took during that desperate time. So it's a really inspiring story that I'm happy he shared with us all. Oh, and also, uh, one of my Heartbeat listeners, uh, name starts with an S, ends with an E, emailed me some really great questions about dating and relationships. And I knew Ryan would be the perfect guest to chat about these questions with. So stick around to hear us talk about infatuation and going to pound town. Thanks for listening. Sit back and enjoy my chat with her, with my buddy Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Christina. Welcome to a Chat with Heart podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Now, this is a little unique because uh, we have traveled to you, to your beautiful apartment, condo, palace, palace. What do you call this place? I, I refer to it as a palace, yeah. It's, it's just so beautiful. Like, let's describe you. Can you describe the room, not me? Because <laughs> I'll probably be like... There's an awesome chair. There's another awesome chair. There's a nice stool over there. But like, it's more than that. Like, there's the lighting and there's textures. And can you can you talk about the it's, inspiration for this room? Sure. It's a bit uh, grandma chic, I think. Grandma chic. So I, I love it. I love it. vintage. Um, you know, there's like a mixture of vintage, a lot of vintage, a lot of Ikea, a lot of secondhand shopping antique store stuff a lot of plants mm -hmm. a lot of terracotta pots and the pink rug pink shag rug what is wrong with my my vision i'm seeing an <laughs> off-white it's dim rug. in here okay i'm kind seeing of. an off-white rug it's great <laughs> i love it but i didn't pick up on that but love is in the details oprah said that and i think you're somebody who gets that um i like detail yeah yeah I have an affinity for details. Is do you think love is in the details? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> sure. That's it. That's all I've got for questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you remember when we first met? Yes. Please tell me about it. I don't know. <laughs> were we drinking? Like what? No, we I was at one of your shows. Okay. Um at Fred. Okay. On a Grickler Street in Halifax. Okay. And a mutual friend or acquaintance introduced us. Mm hmm. And yeah. Jay. I, Was it Jay? No. No. Okay. Who? Wynn Wilson. Oh my goodness. Wynn Wilson. Yeah. Rest in peace, Wynn. Yeah. He's dead. That's why I said that. 
Yes, well. <laughs> no, he's just taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 does anybody ever use RIP for anything other than <laughs> no, <laughs> someone's death? That's why you didn't have to explain it, though. <laughs> well... You know, I just wanted to be I just wanted to be sure of my little harpy listeners, you know, they're from all over the world, so I don't know if RIP is a universal. <laughs> yeah, I don't know <laughs> actually. I go above and beyond to make sure that everybody understands what I'm trying to communicate. This is good. This is good. Okay, no. Okay. So anyway. No, so, yeah, so we were there and he introduced us. I don't know how I think he had bought a painting off me at some point that's how i knew him okay he was obsessed with your art i remember this i worked for a company called reason regional residential services and he i worked in his house because he had a client living with him and i would go to work and i can i many 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 times he would bring up you and your painting and how talented you were and I was like, God, I'm really getting sick of hearing about this guy, Ryan McGrath. Like, who fucking cares? <laughs> I know. <laughs> and then I met you. And yeah. then, then what? Tell us, tell me the story of us. Like, what? I, <laughs> let's not talk about you. Let's just talk about us. I don't know. I just remember becoming fast. I do remember becoming fast friends with you. I think. Yeah. Like I. But we met at Fred, and I don't know. Did we? I guess we I did I change numbers or I don't know at some point very quickly I realized that you were a singer songwriter. Mhm. And I thought you were incredible. I thought I loved your voice. I felt it was very unique and powerful. Well, I felt the same way about you because I think I think I was at a show was it Rose Cousins' show? You were opening oh for my Rose? God, I opened for Rose and I Fred? played way too long. Yes, I played way too long. Yes. And I think I was at the show. Okay. Because I knew Fred and, and Joel. and Yes, Fred used to do my hair. I knew yeah. Rose because she used to play at my open mic that I had. You had an open mic? On Barrington Street, Ceci Bon Cafe. For like oh two my years, God. and Rose used to come and play at the open mic that I hosted. Yeah, and I think that's I was at Rose's show. <laughs> <Sorry. Gotcha. laughs> and we introduced you and I. Okay, right? there we got the story straight. I think that's how it went. Okay, thank God. No, it is. It, I really just feel like you've always been in my life, but there were like there were some blurry years for me, um, but. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is like we're we're like legit friends. Like we've mm -hmm. not only kept in touch, but we got to the point where we spent all our religious holidays mm -hmm. together in Europe. In non-religious ways. Do you miss that? And um, what like what do you miss most about living in Europe? Because you were there for quite a few years. You've had. Jeez, you've had like yeah. visas living. You were you were Austrian for a while, and then you were Swiss. Well, I, I wasn't a citizen. Well, I just I, I think you I were a permanent resident. Yeah, yeah, in both countries, you Austria. Look, and you looked like a citizen. It's, yeah, I was wearing later hosen all the time. <laughs> Did you ever own later hosen? No, I bought like a little girly later hosen -y pur pink or purple outfit. Listen, when I first toured in Europe, everything I saw, I had to buy. I was like, I gotta get that because it's so different. Yeah. I'm mostly in Bavaria, and these things were not cool once I brought them home. I realized, like, <laughs> oh. when will I ever wear? I have, I have two like <laughs> farmer, like Swiss farmer shirts. Yeah. Okay, let's get back to you. So, what brought you over there, and what brought you back here to Nova Scotia? Because you grew up here. You grew up in uh, Goshen and <clears throat> other parts of Nova Scotia. Yeah, and I would say a. To answer both those questions, a mixture of love and curiosity in both respects. Oh, really? Even coming back here? Yeah. Oh. But for different people mm -hmm. in different Not for kinds different of people. ways. For no. different people. F O R. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to clarify. We know, you know how we like to keep, keep things very clear um, for little heartbeat listeners. Yes. So let's, <laughs> yeah, what do you miss about 
your oblivion? Like, what did you love about it? What was, what was, what your, you said you had curiosity for it. And then, you know, once you got there and you started living there, were you like, how long was it before that curiosity was like kind of waned and you're like, all right, going back home? Um, what do I miss about it the most? I would say the personal connections I made with people. I mean, not the food. Well, not in all cases. Like I didn't, I wasn't living in Paris, you know, <laughs> like I was living in Austria, great food, but it's like, you know, schnitzel and potatoes, salad. And yeah. Delicious. But, you know, it. I wasn't um, staying there for the food mm. and Switzerland, you know, cheese is great. Chocolate's good. Yes. Same thing. But I, I would say what I miss the most are um, the friendships that I made, the, I guess, professional connections that I made and that are difficult to maintain when you live so far away. Yeah. Um, and just the, the history, the, the sense of people knowing who they are and a society that seems to know what it is. And I think, um, being here, I always kind of reflect on that, um, just in comparison, because I find here we're. Uh, still trying to find some kind of identity, you know, especially mm -hmm. in a city like Halifax uh, that just seems to kind of jump onto the next trend and the next thing and without really um, knowing itself. And I, but I think that takes time. And that's what I loved about old European cities. Yeah. Is that they seemed so, um, smooth in their operations and of course you know not in every aspect like there's still humans running them you know but mm -hmm. um just in terms of how people are generally more relaxed with how they live more open with how other people live um where i was anyway yeah. in, in my experience which is limited but um that's what I miss the most. Yeah. That feeling of just being able to go and experience something fresh and new so easily and living in such proximity to other countries that had completely different cultures and um, architecture and art, uh, art and yeah, well, music. And on that, on the topic of art, and being an artist, a visual artist, a musician yourself, I mean, that just must have blown your mind to to be to have access to so many, like within a train ride in one direction, another direction, yeah. multiple directions, uh, a cheap flight to a different country in a, in an hour, to just the museums, the artwork, the history. I guess I'm just curious about how that impacted you. Have, living there as an artist, as a visual artist as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I studied art history at NASCAD um, as part of my fine arts degree. And so I had seen, um, you know, on all the, the pages of my textbooks and, and of course, on, you know, TV and documentaries and um, all this beautiful art and beautiful museums and and yeah, when I moved there, I was, I had been to Europe before, but um, moving there, I knew that I would get to experience more of this in person. And um, yeah, it was amazing having access to museums like that. And mm -hmm. um, it's enriching for someone like me to, to go and be able to kind of throw yourself into that history and... And you've had you had many many I I what I perceive to be cool opportunities. You did um, an artist residency in. Am I saying this right? Kufstein. Kufstein, yeah. Can you talk a bit about that? Because I think that's something that's really exciting for a Canadian to be able to do. Mm. Um, so how did that come about? And what what did, what was the residency like? What was your job? Uh, so. Essentially, I was hired by the city of Kufstein, like their tourism department, to be an artist in residence 
and to create uh, paintings and music that reflected my experience living there for, you know, essentially six months. And then it culminated in a, a show. And I collaborated with other artists at the time who were kind of from the area or working in the area and did a couple of other gallery shows mixed in with that. Um, but I mean, that whole experience came out of a very desperate moment in my life. Oh, this is cool. I remember talking to you around this time and you you manifested this really through be, because of this desperate mm-hmm. that moment in time. But, um, you know, I think also you being a creator, a multimedia creator, you have these special powers. So anyway, talk a little bit about how you manifested this in a desperate moment. Yeah, so I had been in a relationship when I was living in Austria. And uh, that relationship ended, not incredibly tumultuously, but enough so that I had to make a a move. Mm -hmm. And I was in a position where my um, permanent residency was ending. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to figure out a way. How do I get this back? What do I do? Like, should I even stay here? Should I move back to Canada? You know, all those questions, like in those desperate moments. And at the same time that all this was happening, a gentleman named Michael uh, Frederick had been contacting me about playing concerts. Um, in Austria. He is a hotelier in the country and happens, these hotels are called Arta Hotels. Oh, yes, we're playing there in the fall. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Michael. I'll share this with him. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, so, just the timing around all of this. And I was living with a friend at, at the moment. This was like a, you know, the period of a, a month or whatever. And I thought, I came up with this idea. What if I didn't just play concerts, but what if there was an artist in residence program or something? You know, I was making this shit up in my head. Mm -hmm. Like, how do I find a way to stay in the country and feel comfortable and feel stable and... um, but still be able to create the way I wanted to. And so I composed an email to Michael, who I had never met in person, I don't think, when I wrote this email to him. And I I was very honest in the email. I said, look, you've been asking me to play some shows. I've got Um, a better deal for you, buddy. Yeah, basically. I'm moving in. (laughs) Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Hey, hope you're taking notes, little heartbeat listeners. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I had said to him um, in the email, um, I am going through a breakup and my residency is ending. Uh, I basically need, you know, someone to kind of sign off on me to give me an opportunity like now, like it was, it was a This is moment. your opportunity to give me an opportunity. Yeah, exactly. I love it. <laughs> and yeah, I, I sent this email to him kind of like I had everything kind of lined up. Like we could do an artist in residency in at one of your hotels and I could live there and we could do this and I could do that. <laughs> Amazing. I love this. And he wrote back to me and said, you know, What a cool idea. And, you know, I'm going to look into this. I have some people who I might contact, like, you know, stand by, basically. Yeah. And so I did. I kind of sat and waited for, it was pretty quick, like a week. And I heard back and he's like, okay, I've been in touch with this person and this person and the city of Kufstein and the tourism board. Wow, he really... 
He it really... was unbelievable. <laughs> it was one of those moments because when I sent that email, I thought, this is crazy. Like, here I am feeling low yeah. and desperate. and But asking for what you wanted and yeah, needed. Yeah, but I, I actually remember feeling, am I like overstepping my I see. some boundaries like not only with him I didn't really know him but just culturally as well oh, like yeah yeah is it weird for someone to be so um brazen about what they want and like huh and I just felt because I was in that moment of breakup um hi Break up high, low, uh, low, but like low, just but anxious. Like, and what have I got to lose? This is what I. Need. That is this kind of how I felt when I wrote that. Yeah. What have I got to what? And what? Is, what does anyone have to lose really by asking a question? The worst that he could have said was no, or given you another option, and you would have maybe gone home to Nova Scotia at that time. I guess. Yeah, but, or figured out a different yeah. solution, like. But it just so happened, and I think it has a lot to do with timing. Yeah. You know, and, but I sent him the email, he wrote back, um, and for the next couple of weeks, we just had a dialogue going, and eventually he said, I have a contract for you mm. from the city of Kufstein. You can live in the hotel for... Six months, we have a suite ready for you. Okay, this is a, um, this sound pretty. We have a studio <laughs> in downtown Kufstein. It's a small city. Yeah. Um, but you know, an an ancient city. So we have a studio space. Like da 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 da. da. We have a really cool bar that looks like a cave. What's that bar yeah. we went to? Is that <laughs> oh the the gin bar? The gin bar, right? With the yeah. world's biggest selection of gin. It was pretty, uh, yeah. pretty stunning. Yeah. So that's how that happened. How did you feel that your residency benefited the community? <clears throat> so basically, we had an open studio policy mm -hmm. because I was right downtown. Anyone could kind of come by. Did they? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't throngs of people <laughs> <Just> <laughs> waiting at the door. Uh, but, paparazzi. Uh, no, but I did mm -hmm. meet people, and especially a lot of the local business owners. Yeah. And because they're associated directly with the tourism um, business and agency, um, you know, I'd be walking up the street and someone would know that I was, you know, had the studio there and was doing this and... So I made some kind of interesting connections and relationships with like local shop owners and gallery owners. And um, and then, you know, to involve the community more, you know, all of this was kind of uh, working up towards a show that I had in a gallery in Kufstein that, the, you know, of course, the public was uh, invited to see. And I did live painting mm -hmm. on their waterfront on the riverside. Um, and, you know, because it's a small place, everyone kind of knew, like, that's the Canadian guy who's up in the window. Yeah, up in the window. Night, you know, like, yeah, that's cool. You know, the studio had big shop windows, like, so. At one point as well, I don't remember exactly when this happened, but you, you did become the voice of a beer brand. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because that's that that was just sort of like a one of those things that I don't know if you grow up thinking, you know, one day I just dream of being like singing a theme song for um, an Austrian or German beer. I don't even know what, but how? What the hell? Like <laughs> that was when I was in in Austria, okay. Innsbruck. This is before the artist residency. Yeah, yeah, and I was working in a studio. Um, with a band or I was recording some demos in a studio um, outside of Innsbruck and the studio got this, you know, call from an advertising agency. Like, you know, we're searching for the next voice of Stiegel beer. Stiegel beer. Which is, you know, the red and white can with the mm -hmm. stairs, Stiegel's yeah. stairs. Um, 
And they said, okay, we're going to, you know, pick a few different artists and send you some demos. And, and so I was, I think one of, I don't know, six or I don't know how many people were, were doing this, but, um, yeah, just randomly in the studio one night, we recorded the song, the demo. In in English. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, so know, it's a, I don't an, even know if um, I've ever heard the song. Now I want to, you have to play it for me later. It was a, a hit, a number one hit in Austria. Whoa. In, I think the nineties or like oh, mid eighties. Okay. And they were revamping it for this new commercial. Okay. Yeah. And, uh. All about slow. The song is called Slow Down. Slow Down. Yeah. Drink your Stiegel nice and slow. Exactly. And the, the commercial is like this hot guy driving a tractor. and was it I you? don't know. His car breaks down. Mm-hmm. He jumps on a tractor with these like farmer women. and Oh, we, you know. are they in Lederhosen? Uh, no. Uh, no, okay. I don't think so. I think they're in. So did anything wild <laughs> other than the just doing the vocal for that, which is wild, but like was there any other wild opportunity that came from that? Yeah. So it so it aired like we record after they chose me to do it. Yeah. We, you know, re recorded it with the um advertising agency people at the studio, which is intimidating when you have like uh, yeah. You know, the client is there, like, watching you, like. Did they critique? <laughs> were they, like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there were, there were moments where they're like, mm, maybe it needs to sound a little bit like. Shania? A little, a little <laughs> bit like Shania. A little, <laughs> a little more Shania, a little Michael. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, but it was cool. Yeah. And so it aired with the commercial, and it was in. I think it ran in Austria and Switzerland and Germany for like three years or something. They use this commercial on TV. Do you see royal- back end royalties from that? No, I could pay it a flat fee. Hmm. Yeah. Cool, cool. Which I regret now. <laughs> Should have been your lawyer. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. I wouldn't have. I probably would have screwed you over. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, and then that led to the owner of Stiegel. Yeah based in Salzburg in Austria. They were having a big event, um, like an outdoor open air concert. And they wanted, they had a symphony orchestra there, like a full symphony. No biggie. To play some stuff. And one of the, they wanted this new version of the song played with a symphony orchestra. (laughs) As part of this event at the like Stiegel's headquarters outside. Excuse me. Gesundheit. Gesundheit. Yeah. <laughs> Duppel Gesundheit. Quadruple <laughs> Gesundheit. Geschnitzel <laughs> Gesundheit. Geschnitzel. <laughs> Geschnitzel. Yeah. Stiegel Schnitzel. Stiegel Schnitzel Gesundheit. <laughs> so was that amazing? Yeah, so they asked me to come and perform the vocals for this orchestra song. Fantastic. Yeah. That it, is yeah, it was pretty great. cool. Outside? Yeah. Outside, Outside, big, like, you know. Oh my God. Amphitheater with that's the orchestra. Big. Yeah, that's like, I mean, it's, I mean, when I think of that area where you were living, just having toured through there for many years, it just, it just sort of feels like, even when you're describing all this, it just feels like a fairy tale, like, you know, and the, the Alps, the mountains, the the valleys, the everything is so vibrant, like even oftentimes in the winter as well, there's always something vibrant to look at, unless you're further north than Europe, but go ahead. Yeah, but I think that's something that you see if you're on holiday or on tour Mm -hmm. when you get a snippet of something and yeah, of course, like everything is beautiful. The landscape is beautiful, but it is here too. But I think that the difference is, is that, you know, I had, I had a friend um, who I met through an English speaking group in Mm -hmm. Innsbruck. Yeah. Very early on, like within the first few months. And we were just chatting about her experience. I think she had been there for a couple of years and, um, she said, 
I think she was asking, do you like the mountains or whatever? And I said, I mean, yeah, they're stunning. They're beautiful. And she said something to the effect of people um, stay here until they don't see the mountains anymore. Ooh. There's something to the effect of like, yeah, the beauty is there and it's stunning. Until it's not. Until it's like, meh. Until life takes over and then the mountains just become. Mount, big humps of dirt. <laughs> 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 Cancerous mounds. <laughs> um. No, but, and that was, I mean, kind of true for me. Like, uh, where I, you know, it's, I, I could always see the beauty of them, but um, when life, after, you know, a, f- a few years, and you're thinking about other things, and you're trying to build your career and your job and your friendships and relationships, and the landscape becomes much less vibrant or it's vivid. Much of a reason to even be there, stay. It's not a priority right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, you start you start missing the ocean, Mm. you know, or you start feeling like the mountains are a bit uh, claustrophobic or, you know. You start uh, missing the hard economic times from Atlantic Canada. (laughs) Yeah, you know. The struggle. (laughs) The the struggling health care (laughs) system. Yeah. Your family. Didn't miss that. Miss the family, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what was it finally that pulled you back here? We're coming around the mountain here to this really other cool thing in your life now that you've created, but first I want people to know, what is it that brought you? Because, you know, I think a lot of people are like, oh, the dream might be to live somewhere romantic like Switzerland or, you know, mm-hmm. um, you came back. Yeah, and it it is a dream too like and it still is close to my heart to you know my experiences there you miss it i miss it yeah yeah i do um but why did i come home so i missed home Mm -hmm. i wasn't connecting um with people or myself the way i wanted to be in switzerland and it was, you know, at first it was nice. It's just an incredibly beautiful country and um, beautiful cities and public transit is amazing. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. um, but I was missing my family like the last couple of years um, and missing friends. And it just got to a point, and I think in my relationship as well, where the urge for me to stay there became weaker than my urge to to go home. Yeah. And it also came from, um, you know, trying a few different things, like feeling like, okay, how do I make my life feel better here now? Trying those things and those things not working. And... You know, in the last six months, especially the the last year, it was just, um, yeah, I felt like I was. You were trying and trying and banging my head against the wall, just like, you know, you kind of try every avenue, like, okay, maybe this will make me feel happy and settled. Yeah. Maybe that will. And, um, you know, my relationship at the time was, was great. Like, um, I was lucky in in many respects, but I wasn't personally happy with what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it just got to a point where a very good friend, um, one of my besties came to visit and I realized when he came and said, you are not yourself here. Mm-hmm. And it hit me like a ton of bricks when I was, I just thought, yeah, like he sees it all, someone who knows me very well. And it's Joe. It's Joe Landry. Joe Landry. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that was the turning point for me. Yeah. 
And I thought, okay, I miss everyone. Things aren't working out the way I want them to. And that's when I said to Stefan, okay, it's time to for me to go. Switch it up, yeah. yeah. Interesting that you brought up that Joe's visit and what he said to you stuck and made you mm -hmm. make, helped you make that decision for yourself. You did that for me. And I don't know if you remember when you did that, but we were, I was in a relationship that uh -huh. I, you know, wasn't, wasn't good for me, wasn't good for the other person. Probably I turned, I think turned into somebody I, I didn't recognize really anymore. I, d I knew every ounce of me knew that, um, I needed to get out, but I was, I felt stuck. And mm, I think on, in hindsight, I mean, all of my friends now would say, oh my God, we didn't like you when you were with that person and we didn't like that person. And um, now they would say that, but at the time, nobody said anything. But after a show um, we were both at, afterwards you came up to me, we were chatting and the person I was with was there, but sort of in a different room in this venue. And you said, Christina Martin, what are you doing with so-and-so? And I just said, I don't know. I, I know. You're right, I said. And it was like, I was just waiting for somebody to, you know, tell me. But I think my friends didn't say anything because they thought I wouldn't listen. But I, uh, and this is why I think, when people hesitate to say something mm -hmm. you know, when they care about, like, I think, why not just say it? Like, I mean, mm -hmm. just say it. And then what have you got to lose? It doesn't have to be the end of a friendship. You could have said that. To, it was a valid question. What are you doing with this person? Or yeah, it was good yeah. that you said that. And it was good that Joe said that. And <laughs> yeah, thank you is what I'm getting at. Well, you're welcome. I, yeah, I didn't really. I, I, you've mentioned that before, but I wasn't quite aware of the, the impact that it made. Oh yeah, it was definitely a turning point for me, where okay. I was like, I need to start getting ready to leave, and you know, and well, yeah, and taking it seriously, and yeah, yeah, so which is a know? scary moment too. It was very scary. Yes. Yeah. Particularly when, I mean, I don't know if you can relate at that point, but I didn't have, I didn't feel I had anywhere to go. I did have, mm -hmm. and actually have places to go. I found out eventually I'd faint, but I was also not somebody who I have a hard time or had at the time asking for help. Like I've always wanted to be self-sufficient, uh, independent. Mm -hmm. And um, I had become, you know, fairly financially reliant on this, mm -hmm. I think, person and our, our lifestyle together. So yeah, it was scary. But sometimes you gotta hit rock bottom and do the tough move and put your pride aside and, and just slowly build that life that yeah. you are meant to <clears throat> live, even if you can't see it right away, which, I mean, from my perspective, I, I really wanna, hear how you feel now about your life because I feel like you made that decision you know which was hard you came back here you had a dream and I don't know exactly at what point this dream started but now at present well, from what I perceive to be a short period of time you have launched a successful business called Honey I'm sorry <laughs> Called Hey Honey. <laughs> called, it's got Don't What's Even <laughs> Joy and Honey, Artful Living. <clears throat> Joy with Honey, Artful Fuck. Living. Custom artwork, home decorating, fun interior solutions. This has been something you've always kind of had an interest in? Yes. Okay. Well, because this, this Yeah, is like one of my, when I was a kid, when I was like three years old, mm -hmm. uh, my mother would give me a can of furniture polish. Dangerous. And a rag. <laughs> and, and so you get to work, One of my favorite things was polishing furniture. For hours. I, would, Whoa, I remember vividly bad. polishing, like, the banister up the stairway and all the, you know, and the wood on the furniture and, like... Are you busy on Friday? 
<laughs> no. Oh, because I've got a can of furniture polish with your name on it. Yeah. Oh my god! No, I've I, never. That is so interesting. Yeah. So it was you know between that and drawing on paper bags with crayons and spinning around on the shag carpet to Michael Jackson. Nice. Those were my three activities. Wow. Um, in in this was in Goshen. In yeah, Country Harbor and Goshen. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And Antigonish. Yeah. I'm in. I'm in my mind's eye. I'm seeing all this right now it's it's yeah and so when i started this new business it wasn't a new idea for me i guess i had never really thought about making a business of it um well it's also with, like a lot there's a lot that goes into running starting running launching a business have and then maintaining a successful business so you know you had this idea and then you had to spend a lot of time figuring out how you're gonna what are all the steps like trial and error more trying yeah and a lot of error people don't see those errors or you know often know about them um what you're presenting is uh is quite exciting and, and successful and yeah I, I i'm really proud that's, of you that's thank you but that's also the you know, that's all perception and social media and You um, should well maybe you want to post some of your fails. Uh I mean I just don't have any yet. I <laughs> <laughs> no. well, we talked about a few. No. But no, that's <laughs> it's actually something that I'm trying to because I'm new, I have to you know, I have to build this up. Like yeah. I can't be just like coming out and oh I fucked this up, you <laughs> know, like hire me. <laughs> yes. But I would love to get to a point where I I am confident enough and I know that the business is confident enough and um that I could be more open about like, well that project didn't work <laughs> and just, this I'm, is why. Yeah. And you know like Yeah, I'm envisioning like turning on the taps and then everything explodes. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> I'm envisioning what else am I envisioning? Um a person walking into their new room and falling through the floor, <laughs> the wood floor into their basement. Yeah, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't let that happen. Oh. But. Well, you never know. Um, <clears throat> there's still time. <laughs> it's, uh, but how long has it been though since you started the business? And really, how how are you feeling it is, about it today? Yeah, I mean, I I I feel good about it. Uh, I've had a lot of cool projects. Um, I have upcoming projects that I'm excited about. Um, it's something I really love doing and I get a lot of satisfaction out of. And it's a a service that is outside of myself, mm -hmm. which being a musician and a songwriter and a visual artist, a lot of it has to do with a lot of solitude and self-reflection and which, you know, I've, I've done and I still, I still love and value, but this was kind of one of the first things, first one of my kind of creative outlets that was about directly communicating with my client, mm -hmm. with my audience, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Whereas before I was always kind of, you know, creating personal work that I would ultimately try to um, perform and record and, you know, translate for an audience, essentially. Um, but with this, I get to work with people on a project. So it's the collaborative part of, of being a musician is with your, you know, in the studio with your band and with the sound people and um, the agents and then ultimately the audience when mm -hmm. they hear or see you perform and um but with this it's um it's nice to have that process be with your audience yeah you know yeah. from the get-go mm -hmm. because i'm not i'm not sitting just doing um random designs of random homes like maybe an architect is or a, a furniture designer might be designing furniture but uh, what I've been doing 
decorating primarily and a bit of design consultation is working with someone to help facilitate their uh, dream, dream, their living space. Their, yeah. And I, I love that direct um, approach and result. And But it's it still feels really new, not in terms of a, a passion or an interest, but the business is very new. And yeah. it's, Maybe it'll it's always still, feel new. I mean... Yeah, I mean, there are parts of it that I don't want to feel new. <laughs> like, I understand. I understand. But, um, well, those things maybe will get, you know, easier or more routine. But but uh, I like to come at everything with a beginner's mind, a song, uh, a show. Like every time, it, it feels kind of fresher that way. I was going to ask you, you talked about your <laughs> earlier memory with your mom giving handing you the furniture polish mm -hmm. and i one of the questions i was going to ask was what was a first memory of you actually creating something and no like p having that connection that hey i can i can do this i think i'm good at this is that is that something that happens <laughs> <laughs> i think it I I, it did for me but <laughs> only for a moment then i forgot about it for like yeah. many many years but in terms of visual art I knew something was up in terms of, uh, you know, talent or what I could show or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was 11, I was in grade five. Okay, that's, yeah, that's young. And yeah. there was an art competition in my school in Antigonish. Okay. Where I was born. Um, and, you know, everyone had to just create a piece of art and it would be shown in the Ark Alley of Nova Scotia as part of a student um, exhibition. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I created this piece. We kind of had like a whole afternoon or a whole day to work on this. Like okay. it was a thing. Like, And I remember being very encouraged as I was working on this. And, um, and I created a, yeah, what I, I still see that piece. I think that's that's fucked up that Where is it? An eleven year old. I think my parents have it. Okay. I haven't seen it. It's a little disturbing, but it's disturbing. Well, say. it's dark. It's essentially a tree, but it's kind of like on fire and there's two suns and Ooh. it's black and white and but anyway, the, at that time when and I won this contest and that's when I kind of thought, okay, like Maybe I'm doing something a bit I'm gonna be cool a here. Like, yeah. Because yeah. you won. I won, yeah. Happiness for you. What What is it to be happy? I don't know, honestly. That's a perfectly fine answer. <clears throat> yeah, it's something I've had plenty of conversations about. Um, I don't, I honestly don't believe in happiness mm -hmm. okay. and I don't I don't know if that's because I've maybe I haven't truly been happy but I feel like happiness is some kind of it's like a heaven it's a construct of I know what it's like to feel joy mm -hmm. and to feel satisfied and to be excited and uh, to anticipate something and to feel love and to be loved and but I feel like people, this live, laugh, love, happiness, mm -hmm. I don't really get it. And I don't, when people say, are you happy? I'm many things, Yeah, you know, and <laughs> in a day I can wake up feeling like shit. And in the afternoon I feel super happy. Mm -hmm. By the time I have my evening coffee, I might feel like shit again. And at 7 p.m., I might feel happy. And Maybe you should stop having uh, evening coffee. <laughs> I think that's the source of your fucking roller coaster, man. Yeah, actually. Now that I should, think about it. <laughs> Damn, Kathy. I mean, that's what I did. And I could tell. When I, as soon as I asked the question, I, I, I thought, you know what happiness is for me? is just being at a, like a kind of feeling peaceful. Um, calm, like a sense of peaceful and calm and, and I guess presence really. Um, and in that, I, it, if that's what, maybe that's what happiness is for me, I guess, but, um, but maybe, but I, I can completely, I think that's a, a really cool answer because I, 
I think we do like, yeah, just to be one thing. Like, I mean, it, it, I ride that roller coaster. I've never been good at, at being one thing. It's it's better if you're not miserable all the time, though. Like you know, what yeah. I mean? like uh, yeah, yeah. Do I want to be, you know, experience joy and and light, you know, um, healthy? Like uh, there, I think there are healthier moods to be in. Maybe at least uh, part of the time. Yes. <laughs> you, yeah. 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 Uh, no, and and I get that, and yeah. Um, what I don't want is for that to sound manic that's you know that's it not at all no it sounds <clears throat> and that's not a fun experience i don't think but happiness, yeah, happiness. if we if we have to <laughs> we don't have to do anything but <laughs> if no we have to it's okay just um, chat with her no and... when when i think about the times i've i've felt the most myself ah yes were when i was on a like a good flow of creating and yeah. i felt free in that creation you know as as an artist so that is my self expression mm -hmm. and that is when i guess that's what brings me that peace creative freedom creative freedom um you know when i've had moments like the artist in residence in kufstein for example yeah an opportunity like that allowed me to take 6 months of my life and just create without having to worry about where I was going to live, who I was going to live with, if I was getting paid, if people were going to like what I was doing, because the whole point of it was the process of it. Mm -hmm. It was me to be there, to be present and active. Yeah. And I think that... And I, I really do hold that as one of the greatest highlights mm -hmm. um, of my life so far. One of my Heartbeat listeners, who will remain anonymous, name starts with an S, ends with an E, <laughs> wrote in, the quest of finding a loving life partner is an elusive and challenging one. So this Heartbeat listener of mine, they had really great questions. And I thought that you and I, Ryan, could both chat through these questions what do you okay. think yeah yeah yep for this mm -hmm. okay first question what was the most valuable or life-changing lesson you can share about um, what you learned from a dating situation or a failed relationship i would you know when if it, if anyone out there is going through a failed or failing relationship uh, i was going through one at one point and had such anxiety and that lost a lot of my confidence and I got into this back and forth um reacting and saying horrible things to each other and I was going to therapy at the time and the therapist was like you need to stop like you need to just stop responding reacting it's not going well <laughs> and another friend of mine um said just no matter as hard as it is just hit everything over the head with compassion you mm -hmm. know like mm -hmm. every response you make mm -hmm. come at it with love kind of thing so those two things helped me break that cycle of getting drawn back into this negative spiral back and forth and move on with my life yeah i think for me in terms of failed relationships time can heal a lot of your wounds <laughs> I've, heard, yeah, I've heard that yeah yeah it's true though or they yeah. they definitely become yeah i mean less... in terms of reacting and and you um, might even find that you honestly don't have any feel like if you are able to kind of let it go or just your life changes something shifts you might even forgive like legit Forgive. Yeah, and I think, you know, when you're going through that, your emotions can be so raw. Yeah. That you're, you're just, you, you're all over the place. Like you had mentioned that like you just kept kind of bouncing oh, back and, and forth. And chemicals were bouncing. Right. Like, like I didn't, and, I felt out of control. Yeah. 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 And I think um, trying to find a bit of patience in those moments. 
I remember a breakup when I was very young in my 20s, like one of my first real breakups. Um, and I was like, I had to go for a walk. I was just like feeling totally uneasy. And I was like, I'm just going to walk. I'm going to make a thermos of tea and walk, you know, the the streets of South End Halifax. And, and I was just walking. And at one point, the thought just came to my brain, like, what if, what if this is all supposed to be like it is right now? What if I'm feeling this right now because I'm supposed to be? Not because uh, he doesn't love me or I, you know, fucked up yeah. or I did something or he did something or just like I had this little moment of clarity where I was like, okay, maybe, maybe this is all just supposed to be the way it is. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to plug my my new album and the songs on it, but I do want to say I just wrote a song <laughs> that's on my new album that's that's basically says just that. It's called Meant to Get Us Through, but the ah. whole thing is about going through the process of a talking through a breakup, the letter you would write to somebody and say everything you but it, it, saying this is just you were you know, what happened to us was it was just meant to get us through to the next thing yeah, yeah. and that's okay yeah it hurt but yeah and i think there's a bit of comfort in that like if you can it's hard to to feel um stoic or um still in mm -hmm. those moments but that yeah. i do remember and i still think about that moment you know if i'm having an anxious time or whatever i still think Okay, but maybe it's, this is just the way it is right now. Next. Okay. <laughs> wet, oh, wet. Wet <laughs> or dry? Um, <laughs> that's not a question. But, okay, wet or dry? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wet. Yeah, me too. Always, always wet. <laughs> what was up with dry humping? And, and like, why did why was that ever wet, even? Wet, wet humping. Was... <laughs> yeah, why didn't we wet hump in, in high school? Less chafing. Mm. Okay, what red flags do you wish you hadn't overlooked at the start of a dating relationship? Uh, you know, um, the way somebody talks about anyone like talks about their exes mm, mm -hmm. um like i like dale's never spoken ill about anybody that he's ever been that with. you know of. to me anyway so <laughs> or <laughs> like his mother or <laughs> like he he's just yeah so and you know i've had partners that and even like you know, uh, like it, growing up, that was something that my dad always did. He would talk very badly about all the women in his life and blame them. And so that was a red flag with one relationship. I wish I had gone, you know what? I don't, again, no regrets, but just noticing, paying attention to how the person you're with talks about other people. Or about you. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. that's something that I just recently <clears throat> have kind of, you know, um, have been in tune with, like, you know, how your partner talks to you and th those red flags and, and they're easily forgettable or dismissible in relationships. But there are several things that I, when I look back at my relationships, like, and I think, oh, well, that's that's a big reason that didn't work out because that sums a lot of things up. And Okay, next question. Is infatuation essential, good or bad, irrelevant, or a red herring? In a relationship, like for a healthy relationship? or Yeah. That... Um, yes, that's the question. I guess it depends. Like, I mean, I was not infatuated with my my husband now today in the beginning at all. We were friends. Um, it had a working relationship. Um, it evolved into a friendship that evolved into a hot and heavy relationship. 
uh, that dwindled into a... No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I, but there were periods where like, there were periods, no, um, where like, you know, that, uh, like when we started to be in an intimate relationship where I, I really think this is where like brain chemistry comes in and like chemicals start moving around and you're like, okay, I'm totally obsessed with this person and, um, it's, you know, that kind of wears off, but I mean, I still want to, I still want him to be in the room with me almost all the time. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally over here. Being um, the so I don't, but I don't know. I don't know if it, I mean, do you need it to be infatuated with someone to love them, care for them? I don't think that's. I don't think so. No. No. I'm not comfortable with being infatuated. I have been infatuated at times in my life. I don't like it. It, it feels uncomfortable yeah. for me and a distraction. It takes yeah. me outside of what my purpose it has in the past. My purpose, my feeling grounded. So I don't. I don't like it. Yeah, no. I agree. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck that shit. <laughs> is this is a follow up question to that? And the last question. <clears throat> and thank you so much to my anonymous uh, little heartbeat listener. Name starts with an S, ends with an E for these wonderful questions um, about relationships and dating. Is initial physical attraction essential to love relationship success? Uh, again, I think whatever successful relationship means to somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's going to be different for so many different people. Mm -hmm. And there are some people who are like, I don't know, like asexual, like don't that physical attraction is just not a thing. It's not important to them. Companionship is more important. So. And I think it depends on age too. Yeah. Like when is this relationship happening? And. Like, where, where are your hormones? Where are your priorities? Like I can, I can remember a time in my life where like my sex drive in a relationship, like I lost that desire to be mm -hmm. intimate. And I thought I misunderstood. I thought that that was a sign. I would think that was a sign at the time, like when I was young that, well, this is over, you mm -hmm. know, but that's instead of realizing that's actually a very natural part of like sex drive physical attraction and all the yeah that that for some people that goes away comes back like mm -hmm. it's, it takes work sometimes to to um not for everybody again it's just everybody's so different what do you think yeah. um for me yeah <laughs> hot and heavy oh, well man. yeah i mean i yeah i i like a I like a hot guy, a pretty boy, <laughs> but, what, but that, what, okay. that there's a, yeah. there is a spectrum there. Like, like what if you're with this hot person and like you, you're like, oh, well, I'm still physically attracted to you, and like I think, but your body's not. You just like, would you leave a relationship if you weren't physically turned on by someone, but intellectually or like you're like, well, I'm still this person is beautiful to me. I just. No, of course not. You would. <laughs> no, no, I would. <laughs> Just kidding. No, um, but I don't know. I, I think I think it is important yeah. to be. For me, I don't know. I think it is important to be physically attracted to my lover. Mm -hmm. To uh, yeah, and physically attracted doesn't necessarily mean that I want to bang every day. But it's called making love. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But I, I think there is a pound. Yeah. <laughs> pound. Taking the town. It's gonna pound town. Yeah, pound town. Um Listen, you're listening to Pound Town with Christina <laughs> and Brian McGrath. <laughs> pound Town. And what are your, your followers called now? Pound little pound town. <laughs> pound town. Little pounders, yeah. Little pounders. Pa pound townies. Pound townies. <laughs> <laughs> to pounies. <laughs> um well, my little to pounies. Pound townies. 
<laughs> so what you're saying is that you may not want to take your partner to pound town <laughs> every minute. <laughs> but, but you know, you know. No, I, I think I think that uh, physical appearance, attractiveness, attractiveness yeah. is important in relationships. If if that's what you, well, it's sort of like want. So, it's not. Yeah. It's not. It certainly should not be the only part of a relationship. Yeah. If it is that, I think that relationship will be very sexual, <laughs> pretty hot, <laughs> pretty. <laughs> but for how long, yeah. you know, and. Um, yeah. Or the, yeah, but maybe longevity isn't your isn't your goal. Yeah, and that's, that's fine, too. fine too. So I don't know. Date Listen. the uglies. Date the pretties. <laughs> <laughs> do, do whatever you want, but do just don't you. give up. If that's something that you're curious about, I'd say go after it. And if it's not, there's a lot of people who just self partner and don't. It's not a priority. That is okay too. I don't think we grow up hearing that too often it's like but maybe more so now that hey, it's okay take yourself to pound town <laughs> <laughs> you heard it from dale murray ladies and, gentlemen. <laughs> and that's our session for the day <laughs> take yourself to pound town <laughs> <laughs> ryan i love you christina i love you too and uh thank you so much for sharing and Caring, and I wish you all the happiness in the world. Ooh, didn't we just talk about happiness? I know. <laughs> all the, all the cr creative freedom. Thank you. Creative you can freedom muster. and expression. That's and right. Intrigue. And pound down. And pounding. Pound down. Pound down. Pound down. Pound down. Pound Welcome to the Heartbeat Hotline, 1-902-669-4769. I'm the host of a Chat with Heart podcast, Christina Martin, and I'm so excited you called. Leave me your question, a suggestion for the podcast, or a comment about this episode. Please be aware your message may be used on the podcast and social media. Tell me your name, where you're calling from, and it's also fine if you want to remain anonymous. Thanks for listening. Have a great fucking day. Thanks for listening to A Chat With Heart podcast. Produced and written by me, Christina Martin, and co-produced and engineered by Dale Murray. Check out Dale's website, dalemurray.ca. The podcast theme song, Talk About It, and I Don't Want to Say Goodbye to You, were written by me and recorded by Dale Murray. You can find my music on Bandcamp and all the places you stream music. Visit my Patreon page to become a monthly or yearly supporter of this podcast and my music endeavors. If you're new to Patreon, it's a membership platform that helps creators get paid. Sign up at patreon.com backslash Christina Martin. I would love it if you had time to share, rate, leave a review, and subscribe to A Chat With Heart on all the places you listen to podcasts. Wishing you, my little heartbeats, a great day. <laughs>